Now today I have the normal challenge that I have every day this time of year. It's supposed to rain on and off all day. I do want to get some painting done, but I also have some things that don't require it being a bright sunny day. Now I call it sequencing and because I have a very limited amount of time, I have little blocks of time between three and four hours to either ride or work on motorcycles. I don't have full days, almost never. So I try to do the work that I do as efficiently as possible and maybe there's some lessons to be learned and shared. Now we're basically one sand out away from being ready to uh, paint the fairing white. I do want to detail it out a little more but it is, it's going to rain on and off all day, I know it, so I want to make sure I don't waste any of this day. Now part of this thing that I call sequencing is on a day like today, when I, I know I can't really be outside painting realistically unless it were to stop raining or get rid of some of the moisture in the air, I can get the parts all prepped so when the day is sunny, I'm all set to go. Now the last time we worked on our part, we brought it right up to the point that it's ready for, I think, the final sanding and detailing, and I'm going to do that wet, and I'll explain why in the course of this video. We got the windshield to fit just exactly right, and I was I was amazed that that worked out as well as it did, because we really have we really have it struggling with this fairing. Also, the other parts that are already in white, if I can get this part, the the goal today in our little session would be to get this part totally prepped. So as soon as the sun comes out, I can get it painted into white. Now the thing you might not see on the video is we have a very limited space here and I try to use it efficiently, but I have to keep, keep in mind this is not a big three car garage or something I'm working. I'm working in a very, very confined area, so everything has to be done efficiently. And here's the thing I always keep in mind, I always have my riding gear right out on the table, so if I get a day like today, here's what I like to do. If this were a sunny day, I like to work for a couple hours, get something done, get some paint drying, and then if it's really my lucky day, and it almost never is, this time of year it's so unpredictable, get a short afternoon ride in, but there will be no ride today. And this is why I always have a little priority list, and I'm always juggling a priority, and I always have things separated as to what I can do on a day like today because not only is it do I have to deal with the the rain but sooner or later it's going to get cold that it's very very inefficient to paint in that super cold weather so the first step today is take some warm water I like using warm water put a couple of drops of Dawn or some dish detergent of any kind any kind of mild soap in there and I'll try to give you some information that I think might be helpful in understanding wet sanding now step one on doing any kind of really fine sanding, detail sanding, I want to make, make sure my table is soft and the way I do that is I have about 20 of these old towels around and what I want to do is make it soft because I don't want to have a final sanding, any of this final sanding or buffing and then put a big gouge in it. I also, another thing I do because I'm working with CA in particular, one of the things I want to do, see what's going to happen, the wet sanding, all the, the goop is going to go in here. I fold up the towel, or maybe two out of three of the towels, put it right in the washing machine. So I want to run my hand here to make sure I haven't picked up any little rough spots, anything that's going to be a problem. It looks like we're nice and clean, we're nice and soft. We have the water mixed, we're ready for, uh, well, let's hope a good day of sanding. First thing is I have 600 Rhino Wet. I want to cut a little piece, I want to do a test. Now, the whole objective of sanding wet, if we were to sand this dry, it, the sandpaper ultimately, no matter what the paint or the hardness or the age, it'll always clog up, especially finer grits, they clog up very quickly. The water helps float the parts of the material, that, the painting surface that you manage to get off, or sand off, I guess is the right word. But anyway, by doing it wet, what happens, the soapy water makes for, I'm just going to do a little test here, and I'll do some of this with a block, some of it by hand, this will spend, I'll spend a couple hours doing this, you won't really see it on a video, because what I want to have on all the parts of the motorcycle that I'm painting, I want to have the surface as smooth, as smooth and 
flat as possible. Now you can see what's happened here as I'm rinsing this off. I thought this would be a good demo too. You can see we've gotten rid of most of it. If we were to sand this dry, this paper would just be all clogged up like chewing gum. So what I want to do and what clogs it up is the material that you're taking off. Now you can see I'm already down through the, the primer. So by doing this, and it, this is going to take a lot of time. But the main thing is, anytime I'm doing any sanding at all, I want to get the edges. It's these edges that become a real problem because as paint gets to an edge and it's razor thin, that's where it'll chip. You'll pick up a little stone, chip it, it'll crack, and then there'll be a piece missing. You go to touch it up and it looks like nail polish and it looks terrible. So any of these parts, and I'll just, this is just going to take a lot of time. There's just no way to get through this very quickly. You can't do it with a machine. And you can actually skip this step, to be honest. And the finish will look mm, like it, a factory finish, but it'll never look like that that finish that just blows you away and you say, whoa, how did they do that? Whoa, look at that. So, and that's that wow factor. That's what we're really looking for in this job. If you look at, if you look at this part really close, you can see the primer has filled in every little divot, every little scratch, every little moon crater. And so when we're done, obviously we want to put one more very thin coat of primer on this before we paint it white. But this will, this will be a real test of getting every little scratch, every little moon crater. Get, once this is all perfectly smooth, the difference in the final finish will be from this point on. It's like building the foundation of a house. The rest of the finish will just go a lot quicker and easier. If I spend an hour now, I'll save way more than an hour in the final finish after these parts get buffed out. Now it just takes time and we're going to work on the whole part. I want the whole part to have that really, really smooth surface. Now if you were to take your hand on a part that isn't sanded, especially if you have a rubber glove on, you can feel instantly this is so much nicer. And one of the objectives here is this is a focal point of the motorcycle. In other words, when you walk up to the motorcycle, one of the first things you're going to see, the fuel tank, the seat, and the top fairing. The side fairings, mmm. Yeah, sometime you can get away with having a chip and a paint or something, but this part you're going to see one big bead of light going across that, and if this is not right, or if there are giant flaws in it, it's going to look terrible. Now, I really did spend a lot of time trying to, in my mind's eye, try to lay out this paint job, and of course, try to get something. Here. So I'm trying. I'm looking, looking to make it look like a unique paint job, but that it still would be one of the Yamaha factory race paint jobs. So Karen has told me we have a couple errands to do today. I'm going to get about half of this sanded and then I have to take her shopping, but that's the, the beautiful part of this kind of work. You don't have to do it all at once because we're not going to be able to paint, but if I can get this part really prepped up by the end of the day, that'll be great. It just takes a lot of time. This is just a time-consuming part of the job, but it's really going to add a special touch to it. Now, because of the way this curve is in the front, I wanted to just take a piece of sandpaper with the block and see if I have any this will help pick up any high spots. This is one of the final steps. Now, what, what's going to happen is, and I was looking at this carefully, 
when I had this mounted on the motorcycle, one of the things I, I could look in the side here and see some of the areas that are rough. That's number one. I want to sand them down once I get this outside dressed off. I wanted to get well, not a not a really pretty finish, but at least smooth because ultimately we're going to paint that all flat black anyway. But just that it doesn't it isn't any worse than it has to be because we've we've done a lot of body work on this. But I think you can see even at this point that all of these old parts can be used over as long as you're willing to do a little sanding and a little fiberglassing and and whatever. Now once I get to this point, I'll clear the table, throw this in the laundry, clear the table off because I want to do some dry sanding inside of that fairing, try to clean up some of the edges. Now you don't really notice how many hours goes into the finish of this product, or how many hours we were just figuring out, designing up what we wanted to do. It's, and that's the part of it that's really a challenge, is once you do you commit to a restoration, if you had all brand new parts, well, we'd be done already. But this is the part that's challenging. This is the part that really makes it, in our case, a, uh, um, a big, long project that stretches out. It seems, sometime it seems like forever, but then I look down the table and I realize I'm, I'm making progress every day, and I hope you enjoy these days. You, share in a shop with me and these little rides we take. We're really sharing our life is what's happening. So the issue is along here this is an area where the part that this is going to mate to butts up on this. So if I have a little lump here which is what I have, I have I want to dress this edge up about an inch, well three quarters of an inch, dress it off with the power sander also in here, I'm going to see some, some of this you really see, I didn't realize you see that much of it, up till about here, maybe even Bondo in some of these rough areas, but you do see this, and up along here I see it a little bit, so because we have this rainy day, I'm willing to spend an extra, well, an extra couple hours doing this before this session ends. And I really don't want to do this part of it with the power sander, I'll save that for the other parts of it, but right around the edge here, because what will happen if I have a high spot when I, mount, when I mount the windshield, if there's a little mountain, it'll tend to put a stress riser in the plastic. I don't want to do that, of course. So if I just take some time here, because I have this time, it is pouring out there. There is no point in rushing through the rest of the day. I'm going to spend the rest of the day detailing this fairing out. I didn't, I didn't anticipate spending this much time, but... Sometimes the weather works in your favor. Oh, it's that area in there that you're going to see, probably up to here. I may even put a little Bondo in there again, I don't know yet. I want to see how much it just sands away. Now, this is the thing, if you have a rainy day, you know, if you have a, <laughs> a day like this, yeah. Now, there's no chance it's going to let up rain, and it's just raining harder and harder as the day rolls on. Dear, it is Bondo. I'm just going to take a little bit of this as I, I can possibly make this just a little bit nicer in here. Okay, that's going to have to dry. And it's always good if you can let it dry overnight, of course. That's the whole keto to making this as easy as possible. Now to get that cure going a little bit faster than what it normally would be, and because the heat is on, putting it up by a heating vent speeds that up quite a bit. Now while our paint is drying, I picked up, this is something Karen had in inventory, ultra, ultra cover, and it's supposed to be flat black. So I wanted to do the back of those instruments, but I want to do a little test first. 
because I might want to do some of the frames. I want to see what this is going to look like. If I can get on a nice thin coat. But I need to I need to have some flat black for doing inside the fairing when this job is totally done. Okay, when this is dried, and I'll make a decision if I want to do the back of the instruments, this is supposed to dry flat black. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, so that dried up with a, uh, a reasonably nice look. And I didn't, I didn't want it to be shiny black. I wanted it to be flat black. Looks like this will fit the bill. This will also allow me to test that at some point in time, I might want to use this paint for inside the fairings. So just by covering this up, I think that'll add uh, some little detail. We need to take care of this whole surface because you do see that surface through the clear windshield. You didn't see it with the black windshield, the tinted windshield. Well, the instruments touched up pretty nice. We'll see how that flat black looks when it's a day old. It usually takes a day or so to get really totally dry. It's cold and damp out here. It's not going to dry right away. Well, that's one more little step, one more little thing we wanted to get done. The last thing I want to do is just roughly sand that Bondo a little bit and as soon as we get a paintable day we'll get that fairing in white. Now as I'm always sequencing and updating my list, I need to, before I take these side fairings off, I need to decide what I'm going to do about that, that V-shaped part that goes in there. I'm not sure yet. I have a couple of ideas. That'll be a, so, totally a, a total day, I'm sure. Those things never go quickly. We'll just have any instruments done. Again, one more little detail. It's a job of a thousand little details. I'm going to finish off the day just by running some sandpaper over that, making sure that part is ready so the first time we, we get a chance and we need painting weather, that's the issue. So this will be continued on part 22 or the next day that we have some weather we can paint. So I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe picked up some good information you can use. And most of all, enjoyed sharing the time we have here in the shop. We try to do something productive every day, whether it's riding or whether it's working on motorcycles. Anyway, thanks for watching.